Yuda has been with us for many, many years and has traveled with us to many countries. And uh, Yuda, it's always a joy to see you with us. And it's always a joy because when you come, you bring joy. You just can't help it. And uh, we are so happy you are with us. You have been standing for the right of the Jewish people to pray at the holy place, the Temple Mount. And you've paid a, a very, very high price personally for your stand. So, ladies and gentlemen, please greet our dear friend, Yuda Glick. Albert, uh, uh, you just mentioned I was planning on starting somewhere else, but you mentioned uh, what happened to me. And I wanted to tell you that uh, this week is exactly the anniversary, six years, 29th of October. The Hebrew date is this fifth weekend, Vav Cheshvan, that Hashem saved my life. And I can't think of anything more wonderful than to talk about here at the prayer breakfast, the Jerusalem prayer breakfast. Ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to share with you a thought. I was wondering, Robert is such a man of vision. Why did he go for Jerusalem prayer breakfast? Why not prayer lunch, prayer dinner, prayer supper? Why prayer breakfast? I got some news for you. It's obvious. It's from the book. Amos, Amos chapter 8. Behold, Days are coming, says the Lord God, and I will send famine into the land, not a famine for bread, nor thirst for water, but to hear the word of the Lord. It's not breakfast, it's break fast. The fast from the world for so long that many people were separate from the word of God. And Amos continues in the following chapter, in chapter 9, and we see it happening. On that day, God says, I will raise up the fallen tabernacle of the people. And he says, he will bring back and I will return the captivity of my people Israel and they shall rebuild desolate cities. Guys, make an appointment with, with their flair. She'll show you what Jerusalem looks like. What Jerusalem looks like and what it looked like 50 years ago and what it looks like today. And they shall plant vineyards and drink their wine and they shall make gardens and eat their produce. And I will plant them on their land. So yes, we are living in a time where the Jewish people have come back home to their homeland. Hallelujah. We're living in a time where we see an opening of a new era of peace in the region. Where people, with just a few years ago, people said, nah, no way. Guys, I got some news for you. We're, we're right now in a museum, the Friends of Zion Museum. Uh, 50 years ago, 100 years ago, if we would hear, think of a million Christians in the world that would be supporting Israel? Impossible. Today we have almost a billion, hundreds of millions of supporters of Israel. And they're going to be, the same things are going to happen in the Muslim world. Because the peace we see now today, it's the first time Israel signed the peace treaty. Till now we had a, a treaties of no war. Now we stopped fighting with the, with the Egyptians, we stopped fighting with the Jordanians. The hate that the Palestinians tried to plant in the, in the souls of the Arab world against Israel was so strong. And now, when suddenly the borders are removed, we see that it's coming from inside. The breakfast, it's a breakthrough. But ladies and gentlemen, we cannot ignore what our dear friend Rebecca spoke about a few minutes ago, that we're going through difficult times. The entire world is united. The entire world of humanity is united. And Rebecca, you were touched by Josephat. I am touched by Joel. And Joel says, when you're at the breakfast, rend your hearts and not your garments to God. And then he says, sound a shofar in Zion. We in the Shalom Jerusalem Foundation have announced this year a call to let the shofar blow on Zion. I brought with me my little pocket shofar. And it's the official Shalom Jerusalem Shofar. 
Those of you who want to join our project, you can go into shalomjerusalem.org slash shofar. But I want to call to God. And I want all of 101, not 100,000, 101,000 at least, from all over the world who are watching us, blow the shofar to God, to Jerusalem, to Zion. Because we want Him to hear our prayers. Because the need of those who are suffering physically, mentally, psychologically, emotionally, we want. And Joel says, in Joel 2, he continues, he says, twice. He says, twice. Blow the shofar in Zion. And he says, even children and elderly, as you spoke about Rebecca, the elderly, even a bridegroom, blow the shofar from Zion. <laughs> The shofar, the shofar is not, it's not a flute, it's not a trumpet, it's a shofar, it's a simple thing. It takes the inner sound of call to God, the basic call of man who God put his spirit inside us when he created us. It's the call from inside to Hashem, our father, our king. Open the gates of heaven for our prayers, for all the people around the world that are united to Jerusalem, the house of prayer for all nations. And I want to conclude, as you said yesterday, Albert, that I, you know, in Israel, besides the prime minister, who actually takes care of everything, Israel has a soul. Israel has a solidarity base. In Israel, it's the president. And I began a journey and a journey that I believe will take the soul of Israel, the symbolic soul of Israel, the presidency of Israel, and it will resemble, reflect the concept of uniting the people and re reflecting to the world that as Israel, a light to the nations. So from here, I'm praying on a personal issue, but not it's a personal, it's a national, it's an international, it's a global issue, that Hashem should help me succeed in going on this journey where the end of being a president is only a simple part of it. It's not the goal. The goal is to unite the peoples of the world around the one God of Jerusalem, the King of Zion. Yimloch Adonai le'olam Elohaich Tzion le'dor v'dor hallelujah. Adonai melech, Adonai malach, Adonai yimloch le'olam v'ed. God is king, God was king, and God will be king. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Thank you.